There are a lot of things that impact your page load speeds on your website, anything from hosting to themes to plugins. And trying to understand it all can be like walking around in the dark in a cave. So let us shine a light on it for you. All right, so first of all, weirdest place we've ever filmed a video. Um, but you have been doing a ton of research on page load speeds. I've always wondered this. I've always wondered how much of an impact your host has on the speed. And also, like picking different WordPress themes, how much does that impact page speed? So you've been doing research for right. us. You spent like a full week on this. Um, and so I kind of want to just pick your brain on uh, how much the theme impacts your page load time. So what's the long and short of it? How much does the theme yeah. impact? The long and short of it is the theme has very, very, very little impact on your page load speeds. What I found was that, um, first of all, just to give you a little bit of background on what I did, I, took, I studied four different themes. I put the exact same content on all the four different themes, also on four different hosts. So same content, same photos, same sizes, everything. So did you exactly just make up a site? Just I made to up put a site on? and I just put, took demo content uh -huh. um, and, and loaded it up on the site. So they had, each had 10 posts. Um, I put e images on them that I had already sort of um, sized down. I didn't compress them or anything. I didn't do any additional compression, but they're all exactly the same. Every site, no difference whatsoever, okay? Okay, so all the sites are the same. What themes did you test? I tested Divi, really, really popular theme. We like that one. I tested X theme, another one we, we also like. also like that one. I tested 2017, one of WordPress's basic themes. Yep. I tested Texas by Q Themes, um, another one as far as free themes go that we like. It's, uh -huh. it's fairly basic. Yep. And, and what I found was that there was really no perceptible difference. And um, the biggest difference I found was in how the theme displays photos and content. So Xtheme, for example, when I set up Xtheme, um, I set up with Ethos One, I loaded that, which is- um, Has those photos across exactly. the top. Exactly, so I set up the post carousel. There were, I had six photos in the carousel, so it was fo fully loaded up. And um, that one, with all that, was slightly slower. Again, nothing you would ever perceive. But you're saying it's not because of the theme, it's no. just because it had more images on Exactly, the page. there's more images to load. Uh -huh. Whereas on like these, the free themes and on Divi, it's only loading one feature image per article. This one was loading the feature images and the carousel. So if we compare apples to apples and uh -huh. we have you know, about the same number of images and everything uh, displayed, there was no, no difference. difference. So how did you do the testing to know that there wasn't, and we're not saying that, the, you're not saying that there's no difference, just right. that there's, the difference is scientific exactly. at some point. There's no, there's no practical, I mean, in the world of practicality, when you load the site, when you click on the website and go to a page, you won't perceive a difference as okay, a person. But lots of different ways to to, to test, test it, right. you know, Google Page Speed, Pingdom, GT Metrics, uh -huh. and a, a half dozen others. Others, yep. I what I did was I went to Google Page Speed Insights first, so I got their optimization it's score. Probably the most reliable way uh -huh. to test. And and with that one, I could get their optimization score, but their page load speeds, unless the site's been up for a little while and the page has had sufficient traffic, they won't actually give you okay. a time. Yeah. But what they will give you is an optimization score. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and again, no perceptible difference. I mean, the optimization scores were the same within um, within any statistical error. I mean, there wasn't a statistically significant difference between mm -hmm. them, okay? Um, I also went over to Pingdom. I got their performance score, which is a zero to 100 score, mm -hmm. as well as a site load time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't just test the home page. I tested the home page and then two other pages on the website. That's important because right. People usually think are just the home page when you're yeah. testing page speed, um, and the home page is not the most common that people are going to be, right. to visit. It may be the number one page on your site, but far more common is that somebody lands in an article. So testing what right. your articles look like is a big deal. Absolutely, that's actually far more important I think than testing the home page. Mm -hmm. um, I also went over to GT Metrics and ran the same tests. Mm -hmm. So they give me two different performance ratings. Um, as well as a, a time to load the, the it, it's a fully loaded time, mm -hmm. but I think it's uh, that DCM metric, um, metric that, uh, anyway, we, we've talked about that in another video, but 
Um, it's just kind of how long it takes that first page to load. Right. Okay. So again, I tested it across all three of those, got, gathered all those numbers. Um, and again, the differences in page load speed times were within about a half a second. Um, nothing to call home about. <laughs> so, so there could still be plenty of themes that are just plain old bad. Absolutely. Uh, and we haven't found them. We only tested four. Uh -huh. But as long as you're choosing a solid theme, and I guess we can recommend these at this point, and uh -huh. we always have, um, sounds like that's not the first place to go if you're worried about page speed. Absolutely. But then you also tested the hosting. I did. And that is one I've been so curious <laughs> on because like, you know, who, who has five hosting accounts to exactly. really be able to test it? We do now. We do. <laughs> <laughs> well, We've got a lot of hosting accounts so that we can, I just wanted to know once yeah. and for all, how much does, does it make a difference? So, you know, I tested a few different of, of your kind of entry level basic hosting mm -hmm. um, providers on just their basic level accounts. So, I mean, it's kind of the cheapest, lowest way to go. Yep. Um, and then I tested WP Engine. WP Engine is who we've used for our bigger websites. Mm -hmm. um, and what I did find there was a pretty stark difference. Um, the, the lower end, more basic ones, all kind of fall in the same area. Not a major difference between them mm -hmm. from a site speed perspective. That's what we're talking about here. Um, WP Engine, though, was we're talking um, on average a second and a half faster. That's significant. A yeah. second and a half, okay. That's Especially when you're talking about like people are looking more and more on mobile devices mm -hmm. with slower internet speeds. So that second and a half could mean the difference between a three second load and a 10 second load. Mm -hmm. And if somebody's waiting for 10 seconds, they're often bouncing. Right. So as, as we move more toward mobile, we need to be thinking about that. This, this one and a half second difference on a desktop um, is a much bigger difference on mobile. Okay, so I want to go on and talk about how that actually impacts traffic, but before this sounds like we're ramping up for an affiliate push, we decided we're not even going to put any affiliate links at all in nope. this video because every time you mention hosting, people like flip and it's like, they're yeah. trying to get an affiliate link. It's like, woo. <laughs> so we're just not even going to do affiliate links because we just, we just, it was just a cool study and we wanted to share it. Yep. So we've moved over a lot of sites. Right. From our basic, we start every website on Bluehost. That's every website we've ever started. We right. started on Bluehost. And then when it hits 30,000 or more page views, we usually move them up uh, to WP Engine once it's a big fat site with serious traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've always hoped that when we do that, when we go to a real fast premium host, that we're gonna see at least some kind of nudge in the traffic numbers. And the truth is we've just never seen that. Yeah, with site after site. It, it does load faster. Google says they do care about this, and I believe they do. But just to, from a practical standpoint, we've moved over num a number of sites where we cut the page load time significantly. Right. And it, it just wasn't, it didn't, it, not only did it not move the needle, but the needle move wasn't perceptible in terms of gross traffic. Exactly. Over the long term, you may, be, you may get a slightly faster growth rate, mm -hmm. slightly, slightly more. People have a better experience. Right. It, it's good. We're not it saying it's not thing. worth doing, uh -huh. just that um, if you think this is the thing that's going to bump you to right. the next level, what we've seen is that, no, it just didn't do anything. Especially when it comes to traffic. You might see a slight, and we've never even seen this, but you could potentially see a slight bump in ad revenue because your ads load faster. Mm -hmm. So there's a slightly longer time that people are viewing the ads on your page. Yep. But even that hasn't really been perceptible Not in our actual numbers. Not enough to see months to month. No. I, I mean, there may have been some difference in there, but just the normal travel flu fluctuations, you couldn't tell. Right. And one of the things I want to point out is we, we, like, we use this 30,000 page views number. But even that isn't a hard and fast rule. That's when mm -hmm. we would start thinking about it. If you're working on your first site and you're at 30,000 page views and it's not making a whole lot of money yet, WP Engine is not cheap. It's a significant investment yeah. over the basic hosting. Um, we built Camper Report to over 100,000 page views a month and we never saw a real hiccup. Um, even at 100,000 page views a month, yeah. it grew just fine. And, and when we moved, moved it to it. WP Engine, again, there was no real change right. in the numbers. So I think it's important, you know, if you have a site that's earning serious revenue, has, you know, at least over 30,000 page views, maybe more, then yeah, you might as well move it over. The site's earning money. Let's make it run fast and do the best we can to optimize it. But still, there's no way I'm going to start a new website and put it on an expensive premium host like that 
because right. it's just kind of a waste of money during the building phase. So let me flip this and ask you a question. What What is the main reason? If site speed isn't the main driver behind moving, mm -hmm. what is the reason to actually move it when you start to get to higher traffic numbers? Well, I think it's features, um, features of the host and things that they'll do with you. Um, you know, their WP Engine is doing more with caching and stuff. So if there yep. is peak traffic, you know, you get shared on social media and you get 100,000 page views a day, well, they're going to handle it better right. than, a, than a... So a, an inexpensive host, could your site could potentially crash oh, at yeah. that point. And, and, and it that's would just happened go down. to me plenty of times. Whereas with WP Engine... Even with Bluehost, though, I will say, plenty of times I've had major spikes and they did fine. But I have also seen it crash. Yeah. But again, that's only when you're further along. Right. Um, but the other thing is just, just the features, this, the way the cPanel works. Uh, you can customize more things. They'll usually do better with backups and security and things like that. Right. Um, it, it's just if you're running a serious business on it, good to move up to a premium host. Um, but again, starting out from the numbers we see, um, not that big of a difference. Now, we tested four different hosts. We tested Bluehost, HostGator, SiteGround, and WP Engine. And anecdotally, I'll add in web synthesis that I've been with with some sure. of my sites. And I just put it right on par with WP Engine. It's kind of like the same price as WP Engine with a quarter of the features of WP Engine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wouldn't recommend that one, even though they have been very reliable. Um, so. It, I guess I, at the end of this, what I, what I wanted to know from you after you did this, the, the burning question for me is, is this going to impact our recommendation of how somebody should start a website and where they should move once the website grows? And what, what's your answer to that? To me, the answer is no. Um, a, a, again, part of that comes from our experience that site speed isn't a primary driver, especially early on, behind your traffic and your revenue. And so when you're starting a new site, you might as well save the money um, and we have been very, very happy for many reasons besides just site speed with Bluehost. But down the road, I am going to recommend, like we have always done, that you move up to a premium host. And the premium host that we've had the best experience with has been WP Engine. Well, thanks for doing the study on yep. theme and hosting. Cool information. Yeah.